Okay, uh, this is probably one you get a lot, but um, it's going to be a lot turtles. about. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's going to be about uh, portfolio reviews. Oh yeah. So uh, I do get that one a lot. You mentioned, I'm sure you do. Uh, you mentioned like uh, sharing your work and that kind of thing, um, but obviously, like portfolio websites and the internet is a big place. Uh, uh -huh. Is there something else you should be doing, like going to conventions and that kind of thing? And if you do that, like, uh, you know, where do you even start? Because a lot of times, like for jobs and stuff, you, you see like they want work experience, but obviously you don't have any mm -hmm. starting out. Um, you know, you don't go to, if you didn't went, go to an art school, like I didn't, like, you're like, where do you even, that's, that's a bad way of phrasing it, but I'm sure you've heard it before. <laughs> so you know, kind of ask. Yeah, I got it. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what do I think? Yeah. Like, what do you think you should do? I, I've always kind of thought that if your work was good enough, someone would eventually see it. Yeah. And how, how would they go about seeing it? On uh, someplace like ArtStation or something like that. Okay. So you're, you're not wrong. If your work's good, people will see it, right? Mm -hmm. Only if you put it in places they can see it. If if there's if it's like on some obscure website, then no one's gonna see it. It's like you said, the internet's way too big. Uh, but if you put it like on ArtStation, DeviantArt, you share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you, you do the works, you increase your chances. That's that's all you can do, right? Like all you can truly do folks is just increase your chances you understand you can never do anything more than that um you can't guarantee an opportunity you can't um you know secure some sort of career right all you can do is increase your chances and the best way to increase your chances is to to make more friends you know like talk to people and stuff like this right mm -hmm and and do it often right uh, a lot of times people do not do this they don't even do that they don't go outside of their 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 little circle of of friends and people that they know right mm -hmm. and that this is this is part of the problem of why you know you don't do so well uh, another factor that i think people don't understand as as well as that you should also be consistently doing this. You should be consistently sharing uh, progress of your of your work uh, as much as you can. Or if it's not progress, you just should be consistently just uh, posting work. Right now, I'm doing another ex experiment, seeing if I can get somewhere between 250,000 to uh, 50,000 um, followers on my major uh, platforms uh, and trying to get like trying to get a hundred thousand on art station uh in the next six to seven months within like a, a year and a half and i think i could do it i think i have enough skill and if i focus my abilities to also get better at certain things that i'm not very good at i think that will help uh, my goal is to saturate art station with artwork that has not been seen too much of because a lot of what you see on art station is pretty similar Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a lot of unique and amazing artists on there as well. Um, I just want to be a part of that crew and uh, make designs that you know challenge conventional ideas and stuff like this. And uh, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a bit. Like I already think that I have a relatively interesting set of ideas in my head, but you know I can. I can definitely get better at that. And so I'm going to try to find ways to do so. So I've been looking at and, and getting better at stuff, certain types of reference. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that, um, yeah, I share, I share often. I, I share consistently. And that's a really good formula uh, to get, get some movement going. If your work is not that good, though, uh, mm -hmm. obviously it's going to move slower. But it doesn't mean that it's not moving at all. It's just it's moving slower. Uh, and less likely uh, are people going to be excited about it. But there's going to be some people, you know, 
And maybe those those people are the people that are going to give you those first work experiences that you were talking about. You know? And so for me, like work experience is a really good way to funnel out a lot of people, right? Especially for like regular positions at places, just like a regular junior concept artist or just a concept artist position that doesn't say senior, uh -huh. you know? Senior usually refers, it doesn't really refer to like people who are better. It generally just refers to people who just have more experience. And I think that's the only time it really matters. Because it is good to have a couple people who have been working in, in, in the industry for a while to kind of help guide and motivate and potentially mentor the younger talent or I'll say like the less um, experienced talent because sometimes mm -hmm. maybe that talent is not young, you know? <clears throat> but, you know, just have a actual good um, – group of people who can work well together you know you want to have a good mixture of people right <clears throat> but experience doesn't really matter if you just want to get in um because a lot of the experience that you're probably referring to can be learned on the job within like a month you know like like mm -hmm. pipelines and stuff like this you know it's not that crazy you know i, I could probably explain it to you in, in like 10 minutes or less Right, you have pre-production, which is basically a bunch of people who come up with ideas and drawings and stories, and then you you put that together and send it to production, who are the people who make the stuff based off of those stories and ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And then you uh, animate it and you rig it, and you put it in the post, which is just more people making it more polished. Right, and that's pretty much it. And then just like understanding those workflows and like how it is to be a concept artist for that. As long as you're a, an adaptable artist, like you're able to iterate rapidly and you're able to take criticism, uh, you, should, you should be all right. You know, it's, re it's really not as challenging as it may appear. Like, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's easy either. I'm just saying um, that experience note isn't, that relevant in a lot of cases it's kind of okay. just like hr mumble jumbo right. right so they put it there but don't let that like stop you from yeah they, they most likely will hire you if you're really good <laughs> you know i i know i just know too many artists who were not experienced as you would say mm -hmm. and uh work in the industry just fine you know Okay, I mean, like, I knew they existed. I just know not a lot of them. No, there's, there's quite a bit. Um, but almost always, all the things that have always been true is that they're just really good. Mm -hmm. You know? Because that, that is clear. Like, if I'm hiring somebody and you're really capable, then it's obvious that you are. You know? Like, if we're drawing pirates for, like, a pirate game, and, like, your whole portfolio is, like, beautifully painted and designed pirates, you know, it's it's not that hard of a choice for the studio to kind of consider you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here. You know what I mean? And so, like I said, it's not that it's it's that simple. Like you just be really good. Uh, it just doesn't. It, it definitely helps a lot. Okay. And timing obviously helps a lot too because you might be really good and you might be a perfect fit for a specific studio, but if they don't have a spot for you, you know, it just might not matter, you mm -hmm. know? So that's why I say you can only increase your chances. That's why I focus on those, that terminology because that's the most uh, practical way of thinking about it. Anything else could potentially uh, misguide you. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. And like when you're talking about making friends, is that what you would call like making connections, like in the business world? Because like, yeah, like networking yeah. is the networking the that kind of term, thing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and the reason why I generally don't use networking, but it it literally is that, right? You're networking, uh, but I say making friends because it's better. Because if you make friends, friends like to hire friends. You know, like if you're the person that hung out with some guy at like GDC and you guys got super drunk. It was, you guys became real good friends and then you guys kept in touch afterwards, you know, it just mm -hmm. becomes easier to like 
work together in the future like let's say that person becomes an art director or a uh, concept artist for a company and they're hey we're looking for people you know do you have anybody to recommend like that's always what happens right like that case of like oh yeah of course i have like this guy i knew super fun guy he's really good to give him a chance they'll put his name in the in the the gauntlet like i uh, had an opportunity to potentially work at uh, valve i had a friend that worked there he saw that i was programming and doing all that cool stuff and he's like you know like valve is all about that they like, love people who can do like multiple things and, and do it pretty well right very few students do this okay because it's, it's they don't have like the same kind of capital as valve valve has that steam money you know what i mean mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so they're they're able to like make all these kinds of crazy like uh, unorthodox type of uh, approaches to their business strategies but anyway um that's not the point the point i'm trying to make though is that you know like um because i had a friend there and he like vouched for me you know like uh I had that opportunity, you know, but unfortunately the kinds of stuff that they were looking for is like still like way out of my, my skill set, right? They're like looking for masters of like multiple trades and those trades are very noticeable. I, I can definitely say that I'm not a master at programming, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, and I think they just weren't into the, the art style, which is fine, you know, I'm not, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> you know and so that's just the case of the situation right like but here's the thing even though that opportunity may have like went sour at the time um doesn't mean that an opportunity is gone he even told me he's like you know they're always always looking to hire you know mm -hmm. and he said once you get your stuff like to a place that i feel like they, they would start to change their mind about it like i'll sh share it again you know yeah and um and if i really was ambitious about it if i really wanted to do that like take that career opportunity you know what i mean um i could probably i probably could do it you know what i mean and so that's my point and and again that's just one example but there's so many other examples you know of just the same the same situation just a different, a, a different uh, skin on it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm a big believer of just like, yeah, make friends. Friends are really uh, a savior to a lot of people's now, growth. Would you recommend like going to a convention for yeah, that always. purpose? Yeah. You should, you should go to conventions. You should go to forums. You should, you should always make an effort to just make friends in all sorts of places. Okay. Uh, I'll let someone else have a question. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Did someone else have a question? Nobody has a question? Well, you can keep asking questions then if you have more. Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I do have another one. Uh, I was wondering, because you do a lot of stuff where like you start out with local values, and, uh, Sorry, especially like with your thumbnails and stuff. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, well, you usually start out with local values, even when you're like in the thumbnail stage. And I just had this uh, this question as to whether um, that is like, does that cause problems when you're doing like, say, I don't know, an armor design or something for a character that's going to potentially have like die choices where like local value is not even going to be a thing because the, uh, you know, the player is going to choose all the colors and everything. Do you need to like 
go more line work for that kind of a problem or or do you stay with local values and you just like see what happens what what's what's the problem again well say like understand, but the outfit what is something where they, they can literally dye every portion of it so if you made something okay. dark gray black and white they could be totally reverse that and it would look like crap but you know it's their choice um does that is that something you even consider at all when you're yeah, well, that that's a very specific scenario. Mm -hmm. And so if that was the case, then I would design accordingly. Yeah, if that was like the, the position and we couldn't pivot at all, if there was no pivoting at all, um, then I would, yeah, I would definitely uh, think of alternative strategies, right? Um, but okay. I would almost be certain that they would not do that. Um, because okay. of aesthetic reasons, because it would be weird, right? But I'll, I'll make the case for why we shouldn't do it, you know? And um, if they were really, you know, sticklers about it, you know, I would definitely bring it up. But ultimately, they're paying the bucks or paying the bills, I mean. And so uh, if that's just what they want, then that's just what they want, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'll just try to come up with the creative solutions to this specific problem. But the way that I would approach it, yeah, would just be probably like probably through line art, you know, just focus purely on design, you know. Um, but the the intent would still be to try to like come up with like a a really good solution to this problem. Right, which the problem is created by being so strict i guess yeah yeah but that that's a that's a good question but the way that i i would answer that question wouldn't change basically yeah i would just i would design based off of the the guidelines that i have like that's the challenge the design challenge you know this will probably happen if it was like for a project that had this already built into their game mm -hmm. you know uh but yeah, even that's usually in yeah, I can't think of a game that does that. That's like super, like, uh, at least a game that I've played where you can really change every element of the concept or the idea. You know? Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of times, sometimes they'll keep like at least the material local value or something like that. What they'll do is usually have like a secondary, primary, and maybe even like a tertiary changes to the design you know does that make sense like they'll have like those are the things that the player can manipulate but everything else they can't mm -hmm. All right and so that's that's kind of how i'd see it i just don't know i wouldn't approach it okay uh, unless... yeah I, I was just wondering because i was thinking of putting that kind of stuff in my portfolio but i really what i really like the local value approach is what i was trying to say it seemed like maybe there was a problem with it but um yeah so the, the the best way i can explain whatever situation you're probably referring to uh like if you're building a portfolio you should build a portfolio based off of what you like and what you care about okay you know? and you know have a north star like have a place that you really care you know like like where you want to work and then put your efforts in trying to build a portfolio for that studio. So if you build a like work that you don't necessarily want to do, but you're just doing it because you're just trying to cast a wider net, um, that that net might catch the wrong type of fish. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you weren't looking to catch piranhas and you caught piranhas, you know, then uh, that's what you're going to have to deal with. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it goes back to your original thing about. Um, getting your stuff out there. If you want it to get noticed, obviously you want to get noticed by the people who your work would interest. Yeah, and and like I, I always try to mention, like it should also interest you, like the work that you do. Cool. Okay, that's yeah, that's the last question I had for now. <laughs> Right on.
<clears throat> Can you hear me? Who is that? It's Mike. Uh, Hello. What's up, man? Oh, I just finished uh, folding laundry and listening. Good questions. Good to listen to that. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought you, were, uh, you weren't going to ask a question. Yeah, good, good stuff. All right, see you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to do. Uh, no, no, I, I do have one. Go for it. Um, because this is like the time to think of questions. Um, so I'd like to ask a question Data that chips. I know you've answered, but I don't know. I'm still re- having trouble with it. When <coughs> with my bless you. <coughs> How rude, man! I'm over. Here. <laughs> God damn it, AJ. Um. Okay, so I'm trying to do the homework that you gave me, right? So it's like uh, the bus. And in the case of the one that I showed, um, I was struggling with translating the form. And then when I was thinking about it and it was like, okay, clearly I need to figure out some stuff on anatomy. And somebody else, or it's not somebody else, but a clear other thing someone would say is use reference. Like you should look at reference. I have a lot of reference because I spent time on that in the past to where I don't need to do it now. I can just pull something. But now that I'm at a place where I have the reference to look at, I still don't know how to, how to use it properly. I'm having, I'm running into that problem now. So like if I get uh, some great uh, side views of like some turtles, for example, and I can see the forms on them, or at least I think I can see the forms on them. And then I'm like, okay, so I I tried this. I was like, clearly this kind of looks like a similar to the, the shape of a turtle. How do I make this look like a turtle, but change it, right? To where it's like an interesting monster. And I I kept failing at it. So I was like, okay, clearly I'm not looking at this right. How do I, what what am I missing? Is there any any advice that you would give on like using reference properly? So you're trying like to draw- how to look at it. You're trying to draw a turtle. Yeah. A monster turtle, like your own creation. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you do it, it doesn't turn out the way you're hoping or it just turns out differently. Yeah. Hold on. I'll, uh, I'll take a screenshot and I'll post it in the, in the Skype in just a moment. No, I think it's fine. I think I understand the, the problem. Um, yeah, it just means you don't know how to, uh, design um from your reference that's it it's actually not too complicated like if you're looking at a a, a, an idea right like let's say i'm looking at like a seashell and i'm going to try to come up with like cool seashell design or whatever right and as i try to design this 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 seashell um like this new this new invention of a design of a seashell that no one else has ever seen before. And as I, as I do it, it just either looks more like the same seashell that I'm looking at, or it just doesn't look like anything good. Um, that just means you don't have a good sense of design, like just kind of able to like, to piggyback off of your reference. And so usually what ends up happening with people who are, who are in this situation, um, they usually can, cannot like deviate from their reference so they tend to just draw exactly what they see or um like whenever they try to step out of that zone and try to develop something they there's nothing there to help accompany them right and so the solution is 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 something that i told victor to do right which is take two ideas and combine them you know what i mean okay like like take the turtle and then take like uh, some other abstract or something that's abstract maybe like um like a toaster like a really cool looking toaster or something you know and then just combine those two images together right like that that is the kind of tasks that you should be doing more right and what that will do is that will do is build up this kind of visual understanding of like how to manipulate shapes and designs in a way that's more abstract versus less literal right uh 
it's going to start quite little at first, but as you proceed, you'll, you'll get be- better at it. Like, um, like you, you'll see like a shape like this that I'll do some from, from time to time. <clears throat> kind of like this curved, like sleek material. It's like that, like an upside down uh, spoon they use it for. <laughs> yeah, that's not where it's from though. But yeah, totally. Like you, you, I can see how someone could be influenced by that. But like maybe I'll add like some of these trims and this seems just super natural to me. Right, so you might think, okay, that's pretty cool. And so, so then like, how does this come about? Well, um, if we look, geez, that guy, super terrifying. Specifically, uh, a folder. that I have labeled trans. It has a lot of these types of shapes in them. You know, like these, a lot of these car forms. You know? I used to look at this stuff religiously. Uh, spe- uh, specifically as I was trying to get better at drawing cars. Or not cars, uh, robots. Because I think this stuff is really cool. You know? I'm highly influenced by like uh, bicycle parts too, when it comes to like design aesthetic. Let me see where I can find something like. Oh, sorry, one sec. Yeah, not a problem. Let me see the specific one that I, I always have floating in my brain. I thought I put it in here. Maybe it was an industrial design one. Let's see. Here you go. Yeah, it's definitely in there. Might be in the past. Yeah, stuff like this, you know, like these types of shapes and forms float in my brain a lot. Cause I looked at it a lot, you know? So I should do that, but with uh, like organic stuff. Cause I have a lot of pictures of animals and bugs, for example, because I thought that would be good stuff to look at for uh, creatures. Um, but well, you just can turn, because I have them doesn't mean I'm good at it. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, That's my problem. There's a difference, right? Like you can be an art collector, right? No, like I'm, I not, can I'm buy, trying not to be that anymore. I was that. Yeah. Like I, I can buy a lot of like NBA, uh, like I can buy and watch all the NBA like highlight Premium clips. Content. Yeah, I can buy all the shoes. I can buy a ton of good basketballs. I can, you know, get all that. But it doesn't mean I understand basketball uh, at a high capacity. Uh, it definitely doesn't mean that I can play. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and so and I, I reckon that, that's why I'm trying to. I don't want to. I don't want it to stay that way, right? That was me. Like when we first met, remember, I uh, I had like 700 of your paintings I found on the internet because yeah, I was like dude. collecting everything, right? Yeah, it's good to gather and I stopped doing that. Yeah. Right, it's good to an extent, but it was for a while, it was all I was doing, which is a problem. So like I've been doing some designs lately and I've been getting ideas just from these images alone. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Right, and I'm like, yeah, okay. Let me make a thing that's kind of like that, right? That's that's how I think. And um, I've done it for so long, for so many years. Um, I almost don't even need to like look at the reference. Like I just the glance is like enough to help me get started, right? And I just thought like, oh yeah, you know, some sort of um, some sort of like like reversed waffle cone. <laughs> but it's like this red plastic, you know? Yeah. That's cool. And then there's like another reference that I saw that I really liked. I'm going to combine too, which is like, had like all these like, uh, these like heads. Uh, I'm not skilled enough though. 
to render these to look like plastic. I definitely have to use reference. Uh, and then I'll just add my own flavor to this. Love red and black, dude. And then, you know, I like watching films like Spirited Away. So think about stuff like that. So the scale of this is not cool. So let's change the scale. Yeah, maybe I'll change the scale of the arms too. Yeah, so this is where, um, because I'm, on a, I'm trying to time myself, I'm trying to get fast, uh, I would actually take a minute to understand how to paint this specific type of plastic better. But this will be one of those situations where I would need to practice a thing. Yeah. But it's okay. But you would practice it because you know you need to use that practice. Yeah, because I want to do this well. Because you're like, I know I need to practice plastic, but if you're not about to use it, then you might not. Yeah, the importance of it isn't is powerful. Like you it's not gonna stick as hard if you don't know the, the, the context of why it's important. Yeah. But in this case I know the importance. Right. And then once I learn it, it's a like compound interest thing. Then like now I know how to paint like red plastic and potentially any other shiny colored plastic. You know, because I most likely will learn the principle of it. Um but that's how I, I usually go about it, you know? I, I keep it contextual. I have a good understanding of what's happening, so I can kind of get away with it, something. But then I'm like, okay, like, but this looks too much like my reference, so I need to find creative, creative solutions. You know? So if I'm, uh, let me know if I'm getting this right. So in the, the case that you were, or so, so your response was like talking about general design stuff. Um, and then you referenced how you learned hard surface. Um, and the case that I'm trying to approach right now is more organic. But what I think there the overlap is, if, you, if I'm right here, is that you're saying you should look at the design and like the overall forms in, spe in like specific aspects of it and focus on that and then apply it rather than trying to digest the whole thing in order to copy it yeah like is just that, it's that easier possible? to understand it's easier to understand smaller principled ideas than it is to understand like every single thing and then there's going to be things that stand out and then you can focus on that and then once you figure that out then you can go back and look at the reference again see if you can find any other nuggets of information that are valuable okay. to you. but but like um, a, a good way of thinking about this specifically that works for me is that just because I'm making a turtle design doesn't mean I have to only look at turtles. Okay, so that's yeah. another thing that I'll have to think about. Yeah, that's, that's, good. that's good to know. Yeah, that's something that I think a lot of people make the mistake of because then you're going to do what everyone else is doing. Everyone else is going to be looking at the same Google images of turtles. So the question really is, why is your turtle any better than let's say my turtle and yeah. the easy solution to this which also consequently is like the hardest solution <laughs> is as a consequence is to just really understand things at a very large principled level you know and um and being able to mix and match ideas that have no business being matched together right so then I'll look at this and see like, oh, you know what? I should have added that secondary. But this is the other reference that was in my mind. Yeah. And then, um, but I'm thinking, oh yeah, the secondary material, or sorry, the secondary reflection, that's, that's gold. I need to be able to put that in there. That's like a, a quick, quick thing that I can add in for sure. And it shouldn't cost me anything. I know that people are, are too afraid of putting like harsh highlights. I'm not. <laughs> and so 
it's gonna look dope because i've done this so many times before right i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> bless you <laughs> bless you <laughs> all right i'm not giving you that one too many um <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> wow dude so one thing that i'm not doing that i'm looking at this which is doing really well is, is really committing to hard hard and dark shadows so i'll just do that now like plastic can still have pretty crisp shadows sweet this is all, all within my ability of painting like immediately <clears throat> you reminded me of a uh, a prejudice that I have. <laughs> like I've always thought that black people sneeze like way extra, and just like inherently. Cause it, I remember in high school, like there's the these black girls would sneeze and they'd like scream, like it was as loud as they could. I don't know. It was just like extra. That. But I definitely now, sneeze a lot. Well, yeah. I don't know. Just the. Yeah, you're right. It's funny. Yeah, I know. Gotcha. HSB. <laughs> What's your HSB? Yeah. So right, anyway. So anyone else got questions? But anyway, um, just to kind of close this out. But like, that's how I approach stuff, you know? Like, I just, yeah, I think I like this. I'm going to keep painting on this, actually. I just kind of stole that, that design. But it's all right. No one will know, except for that person who made that specific design, <laughs> you know? And that's kind of how this is how how it works, right? Like, you guys would have never known. Uh, and then once you see the reference, then you're you know the mystified, um, the mystified element of it is is kind of lost, but not entirely, right? Because it's well, the still, part of you have a question of like, how did you come up with that? Yeah, like, that that well, part would go away, but the 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 yeah. actual design still will have some intrigue towards you. Right, like used to be like, oh, of course. This is cool. Yeah. And so and it's clearly like my invention that I've I've added some more elements to it. And now that I like feel more comfortable like with the overall design, I can start making some braver choices that will separate it from that original reference, right? By changing some of the local values and adding a second material. You know? Um and so this is the type of stuff that I, I try to think about. Like, I know a lot of other people aren't doing this, so I'm getting at. And so like, uh, with the turtle thing, like I would say, oh, what if the turtle had the same plastic material for its shell, right? That's just something I know most people wouldn't do. And then once I've done it, then it's like, oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Like you can you can kind of pinpoint where people kind of got their uh, original ideas from if you just hang out with them long enough and see what they're looking at, right? Uh, original ideas, in my opinion, uh, exist, but only in the context of like people mix and match different ideas together. You know, that's where I think unique ideas come from. It's not a matter of like coming up with something that's never been seen before. It's combining things together that no one's ever done before. Like that's where unique designs come from. And the only reason why it feels like you've never seen before is because you don't know the specific reference that artist is using. You don't know where that's from. Right? Like Star Wars seems so unique, but then if you look at like where it like Lucas was inspired, you're like, oh yeah, it's like it's so obvious now. You know? Like, he was super inspired by, like, you know, Japanese culture. And so then you start kind of treading backwards from that sentence alone. You can start to see, oh, yeah, Darth Vader looks like a samurai. The Jedis look like samurais. Everything looks like samurais, you know. And then uh, he was a big fan of, like, World War II, like, old, like, war footage. So then you can see where the dogfights kind of come into play, you know. Him and Spielberg, big fan of like World War II history. Not the actual war, but the history of it. You know? And so I, I gather reference not just to have like, you know, a lot of fun 
um, for painting, you know, designs that I think are interesting. Right. Like I, I have like my obvious type of reference. That's just the kind of stuff that people would expect, you know, like maybe like something like this, right. That's pretty, pretty cool, but it's not that, you know, bizarre. Right. I mean, it, it is pretty bizarre, but you get what I'm, what I'm saying. It's like, I, I can see how someone can. You're, uh, it's like uh, the interpretation's a little more straightforward. Yeah. It's a lot more like approachable, like something like this too. It's another good example. Right. Many of these images actually are very good examples, right? Like these are cool and a lot of these are pretty fascinating, but like we, we've kind of had this idea of like obelisks or just giant geometric shapes just being out of nowhere, right? Um, at least we've seen it approached a couple of different ways. But like what about lighting that kind of deforms the form of the person that it's being, the light is hitting? That's pretty fascinating, right? So what if I can come up with like a new design aesthetic that wrapped around this type of idea, you know? Oh yeah, there's like Miles, I think Miles Johnson does stuff like this, which is like these really cool drawings of like people, but like in these really abstract scenarios, you know? Like this is the kind of stuff that I try to find. Pinterest is really good about giving you images like this, you know? I'm developing a, a, a game with my daughter helping me design, and so I'm gathering like tons of reference that I'm pretty much just gonna bite, like images like this, right? I'm like, yeah, this is great. I should just create something similar to this, <laughs> you know? It's clearly not just one person's style. It's like a very specific type of style. And I like it. I think it'll go perfect for the, the genre of game that my daughter is designing. You know? <clears throat> because, yeah, I want to make something look cool. So I'm going to look at reference. But if I want to try to create something super unique, then I probably would find ways to connect the dots between these two ideas. You know? With something like this and something else that I also think is pretty cool but just people haven't thought about putting them together. It makes sense? Cool, cool. Can't hear you, yeah. but I'm just yeah, assuming yeah. <laughs> you agree with me. Of course. Thanks for answering. All right. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to end the class then, right here. Yeah, so most of these were under five minutes or so. I liked how that one turned out. Yeah, just got to practice more. All right, cool. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. Um, Mike, I'm not sure if this the stream is going to happen after all, since it's getting, it's getting later. I'm starting to feel it. Just let me know. Uh, but like, I'm going to try to for sure do it th before the end of this week. So uh, if it doesn't happen tonight, I'm definitely going to try to aim for tomorrow. I need to figure it out. I think I need to, just need to pencil it in. So yeah, at some point, for sure. put a time away for it. Yeah, I think I need to do that right now. I'll sort it out. <laughs> Anyways, All right. cool. Um, Later, guys. Have a great night. I'll see you guys in a day. A day Peace or so. Out. Peace out, friends. Good work, everyone. Keep at it. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.